Hello everyone, this is chapter 12, Managerial Decisions for Firms with Market Power. Let's get started. In part 1, we'll learn about monopoly and monopolistic competition and measurement of market power. So here are the general chapter objectives. First is to define the market power. What is market power? And we're going to describe measurement of market power. And next, we'll learn about entry barriers that are necessary for long run market power and discuss major barriers to entry. We will learn about finding profit maximizing output price and input usage for monopolists and monopolistically competitive companies. And then we're going to empirically um, estimate and forecast demand function, average variable cost, marginal cost, and calculate profit maximizing output and price for a monopoly or monopolistically competitive firm. So if you try to do it, you know, by hand, paper, pencil, it's really hard. However, with Excel, this is super easy. Not, not, let's not say super, super, but it is pretty easy. And we'll learn about how to handle multi uh, plant firms. So let's say you have a company, you have factory A location, B location, C location. How do we handle production in different locations? What's the decision rule? Let's get started without further ado. Here is the market structure spectrum we learned before. If you remember in the previous chapters, on the one in one extreme we have perfect competition, which is characterized by many firms. How is many? A lot. We don't have like just one company or we don't have four or five companies dominating the industry, but many firms producing identical or undifferentiated products. They are price takers, so there's no market power. So we're not studying perfect competition in this chapter because we're talking about companies with market power. Free entry and exit, so ease of entry is high, therefore entry is not at all blocked. So examples are like uh, products, um, examples of products that are in perfect competition are wheat, apples. So basically agriculture is, agriculture, agriculture is a perfectly competitive industry. In the other extreme, we have a monopoly, just one firm, right? Many, you got one firm producing a unique product without closed substitutes. Entry is blocked, Okay. An example, for instance, tap water, USPS, first class delivery. So if the city provides the tap water, you don't have like Uncle Joe uh, trying to provide tap water to people. I lived in a um, uh, college town in Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and there was only one cable provider. So that is a monopoly for that town. Next, we have monopolistic competition. It has many firms in that it's similar to it's similar to perfect competition, but they produce a differentiated product. That means there are slight differences between the products and there's free entry and exit. So it's similar to perfect competition. Examples are restaurants. All restaurants sell food. However, the type of food is different. How it's prepared is different. And actually, even between franchise restaurants, right? So let's say coffee shop, Starbucks is a huge franchise. Uh, I, for instance, you, you might laugh, but I prefer one Starbucks in the city I live in. There are lots of Starbucks, tens of Starbucks um, uh, restaurants. But I prefer just one and I feel like they have better customer service so that customer service location could be differentiated or let's say you were talking about whataburger or burger king whataburger or any chain restaurant you may prefer one over the other one due to location or convenience you may prefer one to other one due to better service uh, more cleanliness i don't know so you can always have that kind of product differentiation okay gyms all gyms are there to get us moving right to healthy lifestyle for instance i go to a kettlebell um weightlifting gym right it is totally different i do zumba too it's totally different 
then a dance studio that does Zumba. So all gyms are there to get us moving, but kettlebell is weight training. We do barbells. Anyways, long story short, um, not all gyms are equal. And we also have oligopoly. There are a few firms here. They may be producing identical or differentiated products. I'm going to erase everything on the slide. And then um, ease of entry is low. So entry is almost blocked. Manufacturing computers, building bridges. So you can actually count computer manufacturers, Dell, Microsoft, Microsoft. So I have a Dell computer. I have a Microsoft tablet I'm recording right now. I also have a MacBook Pro. <laughs> so I have all of them, but Mac. So let's not put book. So you have a couple of companies that are dominating the market. Okay. So we, in this chapter, we're focusing on monopoly and monopolistic competition, both of which have market power. A monopoly, again, is a single firm that produces a good for which there are no close substitutes in a market that other firms are prevented from entering, okay, because of a barrier to entry. So entry is blocked. You are a monopolist, single firm, occupying the entire market, making positive profits. Entry is blocked, therefore you get to keep those profits in the long run. Monopolistic competition is a market consisting of a large number of firms selling differentiated product with low barriers to entry. Low barriers to entry means entry is free. People can enter. Market power is the ability possessed by all price setting firms okay, to raise a price without losing all sales, which causes the price setting firms demand to be downward sloping. This is a very very powerful thing to have market power so if you can set your price greater than your marginal cost so the last unit is costing you this much let's say I am making sunglasses the last unit is costing me $15 if I can charge $25 for these sunglasses this is called market power okay also you get to have a downward sloping demand curve let us open a whiteboard here. I'm going to show you something really, really cool. Okay, white screen. So you have downward sloping demand curve, right? You have quantity sold, quantity demanded here. This is price per unit. So these are, let's say, sunglasses, right? I can charge $10. Let's say I'm selling 500 sunglasses, right? If I want to, um, if I want to charge twenty dollars, oh, now I can sell much less, right? I'm selling maybe three fifty now. Okay, so this is a demand curve, downward sloping demand curve, and what we're going to learn about uh, here is that we're going to introduce it later. But I, I love to just introduce things. Um, we will also talk about the concept of marginal revenue. This is marginal revenue. This is the first derivative of the total revenue, which is quantity times price. Okay, this price is going to be inverse demand function, this demand function in terms of Q. So marginal revenue is total revenue, first derivative with respect to output. That's my marginal revenue. I'm just inserting little bits of information because this marginal revenue is really, really important. It's going to look like this. The marginal revenue curve is a downward sloping curve with the half of the slope of the demand curve and below demand curve and also divides this kind of this distance in two equal uh, parts. So I am again getting ahead of us, but that is that is fine. Uh, so, so let's talk about, we talked about this. Let's talk about measurement of market power. So degree of market power is inversely related to the price elasticity of demand. So let's think about it. Elasticity, right? If a good has elastic demand, that means if you increase the price by a certain percentage change, right quantity demanded in absolute value right quantity demanded will go down greater in absolute value or respond more um it's going to respond stronger than the initial price change so that's not good that means you don't have market power you increase the price by 
let's say 10 percentage points okay quantity demanded goes down by 30 percent points that's not cool you lost a lot of customers you increase price by 10 percent points you lost 30 percent of your customers this is sad face emoji okay so this is not good that means you don't really have market power so with elastic demand market power is lower with inelastic demand market power is greater so we do want relatively inelastic demand for greater market power so degree of market power inversely related to the price elasticity of demand the less elastic the firm's demand means inelastic right the greater the market power so that means inelastic demand inelastic or less elastic or less elastic demand basically means there are fewer closed substitutes that's great i don't want people to be able to substitute away from my good right and the smaller the elasticity of demand in absolute value the greater your market power so you want inelastic less elastic demand for more market power when demand is perfectly elastic okay demand curve looks like this that is not something you would want this is actually horrible okay you have no market power this happens in perfect competition and a demand curve that is steeper or downward sloping demand curve you do have some sort of market power but the steeper this is actually better for you Another measurement of market power is called the learner index. We'll talk about that. Learning in learner index measures proportion demand by which price exceeds marginal cost. Fancy way of saying this is how much you're charging price minus how much it is costing you marginal cost, right? Divided by the price you're charging. Okay. How much more you can actually charge about how much it's costing you okay so let's say you're charging let's say you're charging for a product twenty dollars it is costing you uh fifteen dollars okay and you can calculate learner index very easily 20 price minus marginal cost which is 15 divided by 20 okay so this is going to be what five over 20 one over four zero point twenty five okay let's talk about a learner index for another example so price is $15 marginal cost is $15 what's learner index learner index here in this case is going to be 15 minus 15 0 divided by 15 0 okay so this means you have no market power the greater is this is actually higher market power you have okay so just keep that in mind that was an example okay it measures the extent to which price deviates from the price would exist under perfect competition so with perfect competition what you get is price equals marginal cost it is going to be equal to zero under perfect competition just like in that example price $15 marginal cost $15 learn index zero no market power it increases as market power increases okay it equals to negative one over elasticity so learner index is it is equal to one over elasticity so if you are more elastic right if this goes up your learner index will going to go down right whatever you have in the denominator goes up this whole thing is going to shrink so smaller learn index means you have no market power okay lower the elasticity of demand in absolute value lower the elasticity of demand in absolute value this is like you know inelastic or less elastic the greater the index and the degree of market power okay so just a reminder all right another measurement of market power is the cross price elasticity of demand so cross price elasticity of demand let's remind ourselves this is percentage change in price of let's say y its impact on the percent change in quantity demanded of x so these are like related goods let y be pepsi cola and x be coca-cola 
Coca-Cola. All right. So these are pretty good substitutes, actually. Substitutes. So if price of Pepsi, right? If price of Pepsi Cola goes up, if price goes up, I know that. So this is actually something that happens to me. I love drinking diet, diet soda, diet cola. So price of Pepsi Cola goes up. I am going to increase my quantity demanded of Coca Cola. So the stronger the relationship, folks, it is actually a higher cross price elasticity of demand. So let's say Pepsi price of Pepsi Cola goes up by 10%. I increase my Coca-Cola consumption by 100%. This is a really strong 10 cross price elasticity of demand and positive number because they move the same direction because they're substitutes. Okay. If consumer consumers view two goods as substitutes, cross price elasticity of demand is positive. We knew that. And then the higher the positive cross price elasticity, the greater the substitute ability between two goods and the smaller the degree of market power of the two firms so rem remember that also market definition is really important in the identification of the producers and products that compete for consumers in a particular geographic area so you need to define market in terms of use and also location so when i mentioned i lived in mississippi only one cable company so that cable company was not it's not a monopoly in the nation but in that area it is monopoly so there's a strong market power also in terms of use right you can't just compare coca-cola and weed killer right that you weed vacuum machine it doesn't make sense all right i'll see you in part two in part two we'll talk about market power and barriers to entry see you then